The first teaser trailer for The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power is here. Let's break it down in nerdy detail. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. On this channel, I'll be covering The Rings of Power in full, as well as lore and theory videos on the wider world of The Lord of the Rings. Oh, and House of the Dragon and The Witcher too. If that sounds good, there's a subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen now. After years of almost no promotional materials for Amazon's massive budget Lord of the Rings TV show, we finally have a name, The Rings of Power, and some promo photos, and now a full teaser trailer. Let's break it all down and see what we've got. We open with a long, lingering shot of a port city. This is almost certainly Numenor, the great human island civilization of the Second Age. The architecture echoes that of culturally successor cities like Minas Tirith, and the statue is very reminiscent of the Argonath, standing tall, one hand on a sword, the other held up high. Also, check out the mountain right there in the background with a flat top. That would be Menel Tama, the holy mountain at the centre of Numenor. We don't really get much more about Numenor in this teaser trailer, but it will be a central part of the story of the Second Age. Next up, we have this curious couple of characters with spears and massive elk antlers. I suspect they are hunting, and I also guess that they won't be particularly central to the plot. I'm sure they will come into contact with something or someone important at some stage, but this won't be where the main action is. Someone who will be central, however, is Galadriel. She has been front and centre of the promotional material so far from Amazon and looks amazing. Most people know Galadriel best from Kate Blanchett's amazing portrayal in the movies, but it's fair to say that she mellowed a bit over the ages. In her younger years, she was a fearsome figure, an athlete and warrior and leader of elves. She was, as Tolkien put it, of Amazonian disposition. And here we see her in full battle armour. But let's do a quick bit of context for those wondering where we are in Middle-earth history. This story will be set in the Second Age of Middle-earth. At the end of the First Age, the main big baddie of Tolkien's legendarium, Morgoth, has been defeated and cast into the void. Quite a few of his allies, though, managed to escape. Orcs, a Balrog, Durin's Bane, which we saw much later in the Fellowship of the Ring after it had been hiding for a few millennia, and most importantly, Sauron, Morgoth's chief lieutenant. We're told that in the first couple of episodes, at least on the Rings of Power, Galadriel will be hunting down these remnants of evil, the ones that got away, Hence her charging into battle here, looking badass in one of the earlier promo pictures here, climbing a mountain here, and... Oh look, is that an ice cave troll? That probably needs to be vanquished, too. I suspect that one of the themes in the early episodes will be the contrast between Galadriel's drive to eradicate all evil and others' view that Morgoth and Sauron have been dealt with and will not return. The wise ones will see the signs of the shadow returning. Galadriel also appears washed up on a raft with a character we know only as Halbrand. We don't know yet when or how this happened. He's one of a few completely new characters created for this show, so it could be anything. However, we've been told that he is running from his past – and he seems to first appear on this raft, escaping a massive storm, then presumably encounters Galadriel, who perhaps he saves, before he discovers that she's an elf. Why is that important? Well, elf-human relations aren't always great during this time. Numenor, for example, started off as great allies with the elves. The first king of Numenor was actually Elrond's brother, who had chosen to live a mortal life. But Numenor fell into a dark way, and, well, I'm sure that will be part of the plot of later seasons. 
Another elf-human interaction to keep an eye on is this one between two more new characters. Bronwyn, a human herbalist in the south, who is in the earlier promotional article from Vanity Fair, and Arondir, a sylvan elf. They have a forbidden love, apparently. Not that we will see any of that in this trailer. Here, Erandir is doing a series of cool things, shooting arrows at unseen opponents, leaping to a platform. Although, is that a chain attached to his ankle? Will he be a prisoner at some stage? There are other elves on show here too. First, this looks like Finrod, Galadriel's brother, in the books, he dies in the First Age, so well before when this show is based, but he still looms large in Galadriel's mind. In the Vanity Fair article, we read that he was killed by Morgoth and Sauron's collaborators, which is slightly at odds with the canon story of him dying in Sauron's dungeons, defending Beren, but I suspect that there will be quite a few of these small or major deviations from the text, there are lots of complicated rights issues involved, as well as the logistics of translating page to screen. Anyway, this may be a flashback, or it may be Finrod dying in the show timeline surrounded by orcs, but the effect is the same. Galadriel has a big grudge against Morgoth, Sauron, and all their allies. Moving on to more serene surroundings, here we have what seems to be some kind of elven ceremony. A lot of elf knights kneeling before... is that Gilgalad with the dark hair? It's not clear, but let's talk about Gilgalad. We may think of Elrond and Galadriel as the preeminent elves of Middle-earth, and in the Third Age they definitely were, but in the Second Age, the High King of the Elves in the West was Gil-galad, and here he is. His realm was based in Linden, in the far northwest of Middle-earth. He will be directing a lot of events for the elves during this period. He is clearly pensive here, staring at something, but we'll come back to what that something is in a moment. Because we have another elf we should talk about, Elrond. This is young Elrond, and he features heavily in the Vanity Fair article. He's described as a young and ambitious politician and architect, and at some point he will marry Galadriel's daughter. But in the trailer we see him seemingly at Casa Doom, at least those look like dwarves toasting each other in the background. Khazad-dûm, or Moria as we later know it, is at the height of its glory in the Second Age. It is massive, it is beautiful, it is glorious. I cannot wait to see it on the screen. And we know of two dwarves on the show who will be there. This is Princess Stisa, a new character about whom we know little but who looks great, singing to the mountain, and is apparently the wife of Prince Durin IV, who we have here, and is definitely a real character from Tolkien. But at this point we should probably address what will be the biggest change from Tolkien's lore and history in the TV show. The events of the Second Age have been compressed in time, at least in the second half of the Age. They may keep the first half of the Age the same to allow the Numenorean civilization to grow and so on, by which I mean that the big events of the Age, the forging of the rings, the rise and fall of Numenor and the last alliance of elves and men, are thousands of years apart in the books, but will happen much closer together in the show. Elves obviously live forever, but humans don't, so in the interests of not changing half of the cast every season, the showrunners have decided to compress all of that history. Sauron, Anatar, won't spend centuries ingratiating himself with the elves and forging rings. The fall of Numenor won't be a couple of thousand years in the making, and the corruption of the Nazgul won't take decades. All this and more will be condensed to a short enough timescale for a TV show. It will be a controversial decision amongst purists, to be sure, and will necessarily sacrifice some of the grandeur of Tolkien's vision, but is probably understandable from the showrunner's perspective. So if you are, like me, a Tolkien aficionado, be ready for significant changes. 
I mention all this in relation to the dwarves, because Durin the Fourth, who we see here, was around during the last alliance of elves and men, but not much earlier during the forging of the rings, for example. That was Durin the Third. Time will be compressed. In any event, the dwarves here seem very happy with Durin the Fourth for cracking open this huge rock. Perhaps he has discovered some mithril, or perhaps it is just a show of machismo. Whatever it is, Elrond seems pensive. And let's go back to what was making Gil-galad, his king, looking pensive earlier. Perhaps he was observing this mysterious red comet, or meteorite. It does seem rather ominous. Someone else seemingly noticing it is this character, a proto-hobbit, if you like. We're told that we will meet two of them, and that they are lovable, curious Harfords, which fits with the brief voiceover we get at the start of the trailer. Have you ever wondered what else is out there? There's wonders in this world, beyond our wandering. Although we see them here, these nearly hobbits won't play a significant role in the major events of the story. The Vanity Fair article, which the showrunners seem to have used to frame expectations, which is absolutely fine, referenced the classic play Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead to describe their role. In that play, the title characters are always in the margins, unseen, observing events rather than controlling them. So expect these characters to do the same, unseen, unobserved, but important. One important thing they do do is find out where that meteorite landed and seemingly help someone from the wreckage, an old man. The Vanity Fair article talked about a mysterious lost man whose origin promises to be one of the show's most enticing enigmas, so this is that. The bigger question is who this could possibly be. There are a couple of meteorites in Tolkien's writings, but normal humans don't descend from them. I have my suspicions on who this might be. I speculated about that on Twitter and will happily own up whether I'm right or wrong when we know, but we'll have to wait to find out for sure. But the closing image of the trailer is of a hobbit-like hand seemingly gripping one of the fingers of this character which links them across to this figure from the promo posters holding a symbolic apple. I think it's fair to say that this character will be important, and, well, I don't have a good feeling about this one. So what does this all tell us? The Rings of Power will compress the timescale of Tolkien's Second Age, but will span all of Middle-earth. We're told that the driving question behind the creation of this show was... Can we come up with the novel Tolkien never wrote and do it as the mega event series that could only happen now? I will leave it to you to decide whether that is an exciting or scary driving force. Either or both, I think it will look amazing. It will introduce us to new characters and flesh out characters we already know. This was always going to be the case, given how little Tolkien actually wrote about the Second Age. He was far more focused on the First and Third Ages. This series will cover the major stories of the Second Age, the forging of the Rings of Power, the rise and tragic fall of Numenor, the rise and less than tragic fall of Mordor, the last alliance of elves and men. And what, or rather who, connects all that? Sauron. Identifying him will be one of the big mysteries of this season. Will he be the seafarer escaping his past, the old man with a mysterious origin, or someone else? Someone we didn't see in this trailer, because there is a lot they didn't show us. But what did you think of this trailer? Are you looking forward to the show? What are you concerned about? Let me know in the comments below. For more Lord of the Rings videos like this one, please click on the link appearing on the left of your screen now. Or if you'd like to support this channel, the best way to do that is through Patreon, the link on the right of your screen. Thanks for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.